Welcome back everyone for today's video we are going to be taking a look at the 14th and final round of the FIDE Canada's chess tournament being held here in Toronto Canada now going into the final round there is a front runner with Digu Kesh from India leading by half a point over myself Fabiano Caruana and Jan Pomishi. now in a twist of fate all four players are playing against each other, which is going to lead to some massive fireworks. So I have the white piece against Gukesh. If I beat Gukesh, I potentially win the tournament or tie for first place. But in the other game, Fabiano and Yon are playing, and it's also a must win because if they draw their game, then that means that either Gukesh or myself will win. So without further ado, let's jump right into the action. So I'm playing with the white pieces in a must win situation, and I decide to start the game with the move d4 now here i play the move d4 and in this situation you're probably wondering well what went into my factoring of the moves now the reason i played d4 on move one is that this candidate's tournament has actually featured the move one e4 in a lot of games many players have come with many surprises in, in the spanish opening with e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 also in the sicilians and i felt that gukesh having seen that i played e4 in all my other six games with white in this tournament would be very well prepared now in a must win situation you simply want to get a game you don't want to be in preparation and that's why i chose to play d4 gukesh plays d5 i go c4 and now he plays this move d takes c4 as saying the classic queen's gambit accepted play knight f3 we get knight f6 and now i play this move e3 e6 takes and he plays this move bishop to e7 now this is one of the pet lines that gukesh plays normally in the queen's gambit accepted black plays c5 castles and this move a6 but Gukesh comes ready with his little surprise with bishop e7 and now I play this move knight to c3 now white can play knight to c3 or castles I was already a little bit surprised here by bishop e7 of course before the game I looked at this very briefly but it wasn't actually what I was expecting so it did come as a slight surprise so I go knight c3 Gukesh plays c5 I decide to play this move a3 and this is a slight inaccuracy what I probably should have played here is I simply should have castled allowing pawn takes pawn and gotten this isolated pawn in the center but I decide to play a3 instead hoping to retreat the bishop to a2 we get castles I castle and now the move a6 is played and I go queen to e2 now again in a muslim situation some of the laws or some of the rules in terms of how you approach the game change a little bit if I were in a normal situation here I probably would take the pawn on c5 and after the queen trade and bishop c5 I'd play something like bishop to e2 followed by b4 with a very very slight advantage but keep in mind it's a must-win situation so in a must-win situation some of the decisions I'm going to take are based around keeping pieces on the board as opposed to going for the most objective best move in the situation for that reason I decide to play the move queen two and the reason is you want to keep all the pieces on the board here because if you can keep all the pieces on the board it will lead to more chances for complications and or chances to win the game so I go queen e2, Gukesh plays b5, I play bishop a2, he takes a pawn on d4, and here I spend a lot of time and I make the wrong decision by playing e takes d4. Now this move is not actually a bad move, but the move that I should have played based on the situation would have been this move rook to d1. Now the reason that I should have played rook to d1 here is because now if black plays something like in the game where he plays a move like b4, I can take the pawn, hitting the queen, and after queen c7, let's say takes knight c6 here I can go rook to c4 pinning the knight and the queen now the reason I mentioned this is because after I take on d4 here Gukesh finds a very strong move b4 and this is an excellent move a phenomenal move keep in mind at this point both of us have used a good chunk of time already out of our allotted two hours and so we're both out of our preparation now after after Gukesh goes b4 it's very very tough to play I was already very unhappy with myself I did consider rook d1 by the way during the game one of the reasons I did not play this is I thought that this move d3 was a little bit too flat after takes and queen c7 and the reason I said that is because here our pawn structures are very very symmetrical here in this situation whereas in the game after I take on d4 let's say black goes bishop b7 and I get rook d1 there's a slight imbalance with the isolated pawn in the center of the board so I'm playing for imbalances here which is why I took on d4 but unfortunately after Gukesh goes b4 it becomes very difficult to play now here I decide to play the move knight e4 after a bit of a think I could have taken the pawn on b4 but after knight c6 developing the knight and hitting both the pawns on b4 and d4 black is already completely fine because after rook d1 knight takes pawn bishop c4 and bishop b7 black is going to blockade this isolated pawn on d4 and even though white is not worse here the chances of creating an imbalance and winning the game are very very low 
So for that reason, I decided to play the move knight e4 instead. Gukesh takes on a3, and now I play this move b takes a3. Now, this was a situation where I was really unsure what I'm supposed to do. Should I try to play solid, keep the game going? Should I go all in here? What is the right decision? Now, knowing the end result of the game, spoiler alert, if I had known what was going to happen, I probably should have gambled it all. Now, what I mean by gamble it all is I can trade the knights on f6 here and play something like bishop b1. And after pawn takes pawn here, I can go queen takes pawn, bishop to d7, and then play something like knight to e5, bishop b5, and a move like rook to e1, followed by knight to d7 and rook a3, trying to swing the rook over and use these bishops to attack on the king side. Now, if I do this, there's a very, very good chance I will also lose the game because after takes, bishop to e7, rook to h3 and g6 here. Black is actually simply up a pawn on the queen side. He can bring the rook to c8, and in general, it's very, very hard to play for white. So I could have gone for this, but I decided not to simply because I thought that there was a very, very good chance that I would just lose the game if I did this. And if I lose the game, it also means I'm probably not going to finish in second place. And I just thought the risk reward wasn't there if I do this. And as you can tell from the valuation, Black is significantly better. So already here was a situation where do I want to go all in, risk losing terribly, or do I try to take maybe a slightly worse position and just keep all the material on the board? So I decided to take on a3, we got bishop b7, and now here I play this move knight c3. Now this is a move that I did not want to play, but already here I wasn't sure what to do, because if I trade the knights on f6 here, one set of knights are off the board, and after say rook b1 and bishop d5, even though white is completely fine in this position after bishop e3, knight c6, and rook fc1, pawns, there are very few pawns left on the board here after rook c8, something is going to come off in the middle of the board, and the game almost certainly is going to end in a draw, and I won't even have a chance to create complications. So for that reason, I play knight c3, Gukesh goes knight d5, and now I play this move bishop to d2. Now, I really wanted to play knight to e4 here, but already if I go knight e4, on top of being able to play developing moves like knight d7, black can also simply go knight f6 back, offering a draw, and I'm in this situation again where what do I do? So, for that reason, I play the move bishop d2, Gukesh trades, and now he plays knight d7. Now, at this point, I play the move bishop b1. This is a slight inaccuracy, but already here, I didn't like where things were going, and I, I decided that I was going to sacrifice pawn, as we'll see in the game, to simply get the bishop here. So I go bishop b1, we get rook c8, I go bishop d2, knight f6, and I play bishop d3, trying to reactivate the light square b to target the pawns on a6 and h7. Here, Kukesh trades on f3 and takes the free pawn on d4. So black here is up a pawn in the center of the board with a pawn on e6 in this situation, but I do have the two b's, and I'm hoping to create some chances. So here I go rook d1, Gukesh plays queen a4, and now I play this move queen b7. Now the next couple of moves were based on a strategy by me here that I was hoping that Gukesh would get overly optimistic about his chance to win the game and win the tournament outright. So he goes bishop c5, and now I play this move bishop e1. Now, initially, I thought maybe I could take the pawn on a6, but black can sack the bishop on f2, and after takes queen d4, king f3, and e5 here, it's looking very scary with the king in the middle of the board. There's e5, there's queen g4, knight g4 ideas, and with this king here and no protection around it, it looks really, really hard to play. Now, I wasn't sure if this is actually losing it. Maybe I should have gone for it due to the material imbalance, but if I'm wrong, I just lose the game. So instead, I decide to play the move bishop to e1, guarding the pawn on f2, and I'm still targeting this pawn on a6 at the same time. Gukesh plays a5, and now I play this move queen b5. Now this, again, this, this sequence of the last couple of moves was constructed around the hope that Gukesh would try to go for more with a move like queen to f4. Now, computer actually thinks black is better here, but it leads to some complications after g3, let's just say queen g5 and queen a5, because now the material is balanced. Both sides have four pawns here, but I also have the two b's, and I can try to start pushing the a pawn off the board. Now, of course, a 3500 computer gives black the advantage, but there is an imbalance once again. So now instead of it being a situation where I'm clearly a little bit worse, I can also win here. I might lose, but if black is not super precise, I can also win the game now due to the material imbalance. So this is what I'm really hoping for. But unfortunately for me, Gukesh does not play queen up where he uses a lot of time here and he decides to trade the queens. Now, 
I am down a pawn in this position, but with the two bishops here and this weak pawn on a5 being spied by the bishop on e1, I cannot really ever be that much worse. But on the other hand, I also probably can't get any winning chances. So it's a double-edged sword. I was really hoping Gukesh here would go for glory with queen f4, because then maybe there will be an imbalance. Maybe I can win the game. But when he trades the queens, at this point, I'm very disappointed now because I know that any chance of winning the game is pretty unlikely, even though I'm not worse here, simply due to it being an endgame. So I go rook c1, we get knight d5, king f1, he goes rook eight, and now I play the move a4 here. And black is slightly better, but it's nothing special because this pawn on a5 is always a weakness here. And the fact that I have the two bishops versus the bishop and knight, generally it's going to lead to a situation where very easily we could have something like this with opposite colored bishops. So after a4, we get king f8, I go g3 here, a logical move so that after king e7, I can go king to e2, and there's no longer this knight to f4 move available. Gukesh plays f5, and now I play the move rook to c4 to get the swap, and Gukesh plays knight b4. Now, at this point in the game, I have a very tough decision here, which is, do I make the draw or not? Obviously, in this situation, I can trade the rooks off the board, trade the bishop for the knight, and after f3 here with the opposite color bishops, even though, we have, even though black is one extra pawn, this is simply a theoretical draw. But I decide not to take the draw. Instead, I go rook b1, and this was sort of based around the fact that I have the two bishops here, and I feel like I can keep the game going. It's not that I think I'm better, I'm playing for the win, but I just want to keep the game going. And I don't perceive myself to be in any serious danger. So we get bishop c5. I play rook c1, knight c6 played here, and now I go bishop to c3, and Gukesh plays this move g5. Now I go bishop b5, and he plays this move bishop a3. Now this move is not wrong by any stretch of the imagination, but it starts to give me some very, very faint glimmers of hope, because after rook to c2, Knight d4, swap, and rook c7 check, and rook h7. Now suddenly we're in a situation where we have opposite color bishops, but both sides have the same number of pawns. So somewhere around here, I'm starting to think, maybe Gukesh is getting nervous. Maybe, just maybe I'll get some small chance to play for more. So Gukesh goes bishop b4, and now I play this move bishop d3. Now this move is not a big mistake, but it does give black the potential to play this move bishop to f8 where he attacks the pawn on a4 now, and after bishop b5 and bishop g7, it looks like my rook is simply stuck on the edge of the board. Here I probably have to play something like h4, or sorry, not h4, I have to go rook h5, because after king g6, I have to move bishop to e8, checking the king on g6, and my rook is still safe. But bishop to f8 would have been a little bit of a tricky move, and I don't know if I would have reacted correctly. Instead, Gukesh goes e5 here, and now I play the move f3, trying to stop black from playing e4. Gukesh goes e4, I swap, and I play the move bishop b5. Now, obviously, with the opposite color bishops here, the game should end in a draw, but I'm still mildly optimistic that maybe, just maybe, I can create some magic and bring the king up, go after the rook and the pawn, and maybe get some winning chances. So here, Gukesh plays bishop e7. And now I play the move h4, we get the swap, and here he goes rook b4. Now, Gukesh was using a lot of time, so I was also trying to move very quickly to get him low on the clock, if possible. Here I play rook h5, he goes king g7, I go bishop d7, and now he plays rook d4. The main issue here for me is that I can't really win the pawn on a5 without losing the pawn on a4, and conversely, my bishop has to stay guarding this pawn on a4 as well. With the opposite color bishops, this should be a draw, but of course in this situation, I'm going to play on as long as I possibly can. So I go bishop e8, Gukesh plays bishop d8, I go rook to f5 here, and now he takes the pawn on h4. Now, this isn't the only move that black can play here, but the main thing for Gukesh is that he knows that he can't win the game, and he doesn't want to let this ever get complicated. So even though you could go rook b4 and still draw, after h5 with ideas like rook f7 or h6 down the road, it's starting to get into the situation where if you make one wrong move, you could lose the game. So Gukesh plays bishop takes h4, I take on a5, and now he plays move king f6. And at this point, the game is effectively a draw. But obviously, I'm going to play on until the very end. I go rook a8. We got bishop g5. I play bishop h5 here. Important move, by the way, because black would love to go check and then start pushing his e-pawn down the board. So I play bishop. So here I play the move bishop to h5, rook d2, and king f1. Idea is quite simple. I want to put the bishop on e2 and then start pushing p with a5, a6, a7, and try to get a queen and try to get a miracle win. Gukesh plays rook a2, and now I play the move a5, he checks, I go king g2, check, king f1 back, check, and now I try to run my king the other way by running it to d1 and e1. But here Gukesh is very, very precise, he finds the absolute best move to simplify on the spot with rook to d5, trying to create the classic kebab on the 5th rank, as well as some fossils as well. 
So here I play the move king to e2. If I were to push a6, the game is still a draw, but black can go either bishop to h4 check or bishop to d2 check, and either way, it will be a draw, as we'll see shortly. So instead, I go king to e2, but regardless of the fact that now my king is on a light square, Gukesh still plays bishop d2, and now the rook hits both the pawn and the bishop at the same time, and effectively, the game is over. I play a6, he takes the bishop on h5, I push a7, desperately hoping that Gukesh will blunder with rook to h2. I guess it's still probably a draw, but after king to d1, black has to be very, very precise here with a move like bishop to h6, because if he checks here, it's uh-oh spaghetti. I take rook a1, and now I check the king, queen the pawn, and I win the game. Instead, Gukesh simply plays rook to a5 here, sacking the rook after check, king e5, queen takes take, and now he pushes the pawn to e3. And with the bishop in the pawn here, there's nothing I can really do. I can try to move the king up, but black will just move the king all over the board. The bishop always guards the pawn. I can't ever really let my king get too far away, because if I go d4, there's just e2, e1. So for that reason, I decide to call it a day. I play, I play rook to a4, he goes king d5. King d3, king c5, rook e4, king d5, and now I sack the rook, and all the pieces come off the board, and the game ends in a draw. So, while I would like to be very disappointed about this game, and, and perhaps not having the chance to, or, or not winning it, I can't be super unhappy, because at the end of the day, I spoke about this many times throughout the tournament, the candidates is a tournament of opportunities, and you really must seize the opportunities when they present themselves, and today there was no opportunity. When Gukesh played this opening and found the move B4 on, I believe, move... I'm scrolling back to find what move it was. It was move number 11. This was an excellent move by Gukesh, under ner under pressure, feeling some nerves, and also being in a situation where he was not in his preparation. He found this very, very good move. And after that, I never really had any opportunities today. So as unhappy as I would like to be or disappointed about it, I really can't do much because my opponent simply played a great game. So I do tip my cap to Gukesh for playing a fabulous game, controlling his nerves. He is a mere 17 years old, played fantastic throughout the event. And I am not actually going to recap the other game, but in a shocking turn of events, Fabiano Caruana and Yana Pomishi drew their game as well. That was a game where Fabiano was winning multiple times, at least on five or six occasions. He was completely winning. He was unable to put that game away. Jan survives probably the fourth or fifth time in the tournament and makes a draw. It's a crushing draw for Fabiano, as that means that Digo Kesh is the winner of the Canada's tournament, 17 years old. Very, very deserved winner. He played great throughout the event. Once again, I applaud Gukesh for a fantastic event. I'm a little bit disappointed that I didn't, I didn't have a chance to win the event today. But nonetheless, I'm very proud of the way that I played throughout the event. After losing a very, very brutal game in the second round of the event, I very easily could have fallen apart and simply had a vacation for the last half of the tournament. If I had lost another game or two, the last probably four or five games, I would have been out of contention and it would have been an unfortunate vacation. But I really kept it together well after that second game. And I was in the running where I had a chance today to try and win the whole thing with the white pieces. So while I'm a little bit disappointed, my opponent played very well. And that's kind of how life goes. So on that note, I hope you guys have enjoyed this recap from the 14th and final round of the FIDE Canada's tournament here in Toronto, Canada. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, make sure that you smash that subscribe button below. And that's going to be it for today. I'll be playing some tournaments very soon. I'm playing a tournament in Casablanca, Morocco in about two weeks with Vishy Nod, Magus Carlson, and Amin Bassam. And then after that, I will be playing Norway Chess. So there will be a lot more recaps in the near future. But I really, really do hope you guys enjoyed the recaps from this tournament. I gave it my all. Wasn't meant to be, but I still had a blast and I was very competitive, which is really all that I was hoping for from the start. So on that note, I'll see you guys soon and enjoy the rest of your day. Have a good one. Bye.